Okay, here we go. Okay, so let's call this meeting to order and uh, take a look at the minutes. And I don't know, um, do you folks want Julia to share her screen and show you the minutes or uh, would you, is there some other way you wanna do that? I can pull it up, no problem. I already have it open on this. Okay. Uh, the document share and pardon me as I zip through it here. Here we go. First press on it. Take that long for you to read, so I'm just gonna start scrolling. Mm -hmm. I have to admit, I can't wait to get to item, uh, agenda item number six today. I'm so excited. I haven't told you. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe you can scroll. Is everybody okay with her scrolling? Okay, I'll scroll. Well, actually, Hillary knows about agenda item number six because I talked to her beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> Are we ready to scroll a little more? A little more? Okay. Here's all the stuff Don't from all the old business. Yeah. Richard Soros's presentation. Numbers there. Yeah. Yeah. I try to catch them all. <laughs> yeah, you did a nice job. Thank you. Can I scroll, scroll more? I think so. Anybody need, yeah, let's just uh, holler if you want her to back up. Okay. There she is. <laughs> New shirt. Very nice. I think that's the end. Okay, well, would anyone want to entertain a motion? I'll move to approve. Is there a second? I'll second it. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, we've just approved the minutes. And I think this month, there really is a treasurer's report. Is that right, Evie? Yes, but it says here it'll be presented by Nancy. Nancy oh, goodness. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> I learned much I, that I, way. That was a typographical yeah. problem. So, uh, okay. So as far as our financials, um, let's start, um, let us start with the balance sheet. Okay. Uh, page one. Or, yeah, page, page one here. Yeah, page one of the balance sheet. Um, and rather than looking at everything at a, you know, at a granular level, very detailed, um, I, I think the big, <clears throat> I think the big uh, uh, takeaway here is that, you know. Uh, Nancy, Nancy Osonio, I'm going to pick it up. Hi, Nancy, how are you? I'll wait. Oh, you're on speakerphone? Okay, let me put you on speakerphone on my phone in one second. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Uh -huh. Everybody say hi, Nancy Osonio, on speakerphone. Uh -huh. Can you hear me? Hi, Nancy. Can uh, you hear we, me? We're just about to dive into the, uh, the financials. Um, and if you turn to the balance sheet, um, we're going to look at just broad strokes um, we're just going to look at um, 
at the assets. And the takeaway here really is that our assets are continuing um, uh, to, to be depleted. Um, that's not unexpected. Um, and we realize that our reserves will continue to decrease unless we get another one of those big windfalls, um, you know, headed our way. But in the meantime, that that's ex expected. There is a decrease um, from the year before the same quarter of about uh, 230K. Um, no, <laughs> most, most of that can probably be explained away because our, you know, our cash flow uh, for that same period year to year, um, our, our, there was a shortfall the year before of 165K. And you can see that if you turn the page, the second page of the balance sheet, right at the very bottom under net income, you can see that loss of 164,853. So sort of unexpected. We had some you know, um, shortfalls and it's, it's coming out of our reserve, okay? Now for the good news, okay? Now, if you turn to our profit and loss, and you're gonna have to flip through a number of pages because um, we couldn't fit this gigantic spreadsheet on one page, right? So um, let's turn to page nine because that's really the, the gist of it is that. Uh, okay. During totals, right? Well, so. We don't get dizzy, but I'm trying to get to page nine on here. Yeah, yeah, it'll take some time. <laughs> Page eight, page nine, here we go. Okay, page nine. Uh, yeah, yeah, there we are. Okay, so yeah. if we look at page nine, um, and we look at our, our, our income, um, overall, there is a big uh, positive swing of about 200K. So if you go to, uh, I, I'm sorry, Julia, I'm gonna be jumping around, but if you go to page 10, one over um, and you scroll to the very end there for our net income. Net um, income, no, that's expense. And I guess uh, one more, because it's mine says 10 Eight. of 10. Um, On 10 of 10, here we yeah, go. Yeah, 10 of 10, uh, very, oh, there you go. Stop right there. So okay. uh, you can see our net income uh, versus last year um let me see is that yeah so um the the right hand column is 21 the left column is uh because you can't tell because the, the headings are yeah. chopped off yeah so you can see that 2021 is looking a lot rosier um than the year before for the same quarter um and there's a swing there of about 200,000, give or take okay um, okay, now if we can go, sorry, if we can go back to where we were before, which is page nine of 10 again, and then we can start drilling into the, the, the details. Um, don't get dizzy. Here we go. Yes. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, the first thing we notice here, um, oh, a little higher. Can you go up just a tad? Yeah, perfect. Um, Restricted income, uh, where is our restricted income? Is that, is that oh. right? Um, yeah. Um, oh, I think we have a little bit more to go up, just a little tiny. Sorry. There we go, perfect. There we go. Okay. okay, so okay. you can see that, uh, again, left column is 2020, right column is yep. 2021. You'll notice that all of our restricted programs that we, uh, grants that came in, um, primarily were in 2020. In 2020, we don't yeah. have that much restricted uh, grants that, that came in, which is a good thing. We have the freedom to choose where we want those funds to go. So that's, that's the first thing you'll notice. Um, the se second thing you'll notice is under contributions, I think it's account 4612, right? About, about dead center there, right? Contributions. Um, it was forty one thousand dollars that came in. I believe that's uh, MC Gibbs, right? Yep, right, is that the MC, MC yep. Gibbs campaign? So that's that's a nice chunk of change there. We could definitely use that. Um, and then, uh, as mentioned, most of the grants we received this year 
came in the form of unrestricted funds. So if you turn to the bottom, there you go, you'll see that there's 30,000 and 70,000. And that's, uh, I believe that's primarily, I'm not sure if we accrue it or not, but that's primarily the, um, uh, that's the, uh, the uh, Peninsula, uh, mm -hmm. Peninsula Foundation and maybe Chevron for another 25K if I'm not mistaken. So that makes up m the bulk of that uh, 100,000 of, of unrestricted, um, unrestricted income that, that you see there. Um, and then if you, if you uh, scroll down ever so slightly when we get to program expenses, yeah, perfect, perfect, right there. Um, you'll notice um, you'll notice that our um, that our uh, homework centers and literacy and the like, you know, that, that that's consistent with the year before. We try to keep it. We try to uh, we try to keep it about the same. Um, and. Um, However, the, you know, the programs themselves, um, because we had to adapt to the, um, to the pandemic, and so they were tweaked and reworked a little bit, but, you know, it, it's still, and, and who would have thought that the online homework help centers would, would, would be such a huge boost that the, uh, the brain, uh, the brain fuse um, uh, just took off. So, um, even though we call it homework centers, you know, it's been slightly altered, modified to, to adapt to, to it's, it's constantly evolving, but, but the, 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 um, the program expenditures are, are more or less the same as, as the year, the year before. Now you'll notice that, um, so even though our grants, that 200,000 swing that I was talking about initially, it's comprised of more income and less expenses. Okay. So it's a combination of the two and you'll see, the bookmobile there, we paid that last chunk uh, back in 2020. Uh, so that's not recurring. So you'll see at the very bottom that our expenses went down uh, while at the same time our income went up. So uh, that's another um, thing to point out. Um, what, one thing I'm not, I'm not sure about is that, remember the, this is back in January, 2020. There, there were talks about the self checkout machine. It was about, I think we budgeted about 57 K and that's when the pandemic hit like the, the mm -hmm. I don't know if that ever that expenditure went through or not. You, you've already written the check. We, oh, we yeah. have the money. Okay. I was yes. Okay. Yeah. The project got delayed, oh, okay. but um, you already expended it to us. So it's now oh, okay. part of our project. Ah, maybe it's in a different quarter. I just couldn't uh, see it through here. Um, I could track down which quarter it oh, no, needed it's not, me it's, to. It's okay. not necessary. I, I just figured it's it's in there somewhere. I just didn't see it in this particular quarter. Maybe because you, you, you just mentioned Hillary, it might have gotten delayed. Uh, well, gotten... The, the, you wrote the check. I could track down when you actually cut the check for that to us. Um, let, let me ask. I know that it's on the books as you have already given us the money. Right. So what we've done is we've tagged it in our books to say this is for this project. And we know, and then when it got delayed between Jackie and the senior managers yeah. and I, we're keeping track of where the funds are yeah. so that Jackie can go grab them and say, not this fiscal year, and she just moves it to the next. Got it. Yeah, but I, we already have the funds in our book. Right, right. And I think initially we, we, we were talking about it in uh, late January, but if it got yes. delayed, it's possible that it didn't hit until the second quarter. Of yes. Yeah. Okay, that, that, that makes sense. So so we have the 60,000 for the book mobile. And apart from that, you know, like I said, the, the uh, less, the, more income and then uh, expenses decrease. And that may explain that big, big, uh, big swing that we're seeing um, for 200, uh, 200 K. So um, are there, uh, are there any questions? So are, are you saying that the decrease that we see is pretty much offset by the positives or not completely, but, but substantially offset by the positive well, see, like, uh, like um, Nancy, for example, you see the expenses there, uh, right above the net income. You see, uh, in 2020, our expenses were 166, and th this year is 115. It's probably largely due to that, um, you know, bookmobile, for example, it was about 66k. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that that dribbled into that last quarter because we delayed it, but it hit the first quarter of uh, 2020. But 
we're, so the bookmobile is all paid up now and it's looking great by the way. Mm -hmm. that, you know, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> um, so, um, so at that, and then of course our, our grants that came in, uh, we got the MC gives, right? That's 41,000 mm -hmm. and, uh, the hundred thousand that we received from um, uh, Mon uh, Monterey Peninsula Foundation, and another twenty from Chevron. Um, uh, and I, again, this is just comparing the first quarter of two thousand twenty to the first quarter of two thousand twenty-one. I couldn't tell you, you know, when we start looking at the second quarter, you know, grants this year versus grants last year, but just based on the first quarter, we're doing exceedingly well compared to the uh, the quarter last year. I applied for every funding under the sun that we halfway, you know, seem to fit. <laughs> so <laughs> it kind of worked out. Okay, well, thanks so much for that explanation, Aviv. Does anyone have any other questions for Aviv right now? Okay, Julia, would you like to talk about the creation of the investment policy statement? Um, I would. The only question that I have basically I'm going to stop sharing here for right now um, so this was part of our last board meeting um, whenever Richard Soar is presented and then suggested mm -hmm. that we work on this I uh, have not been able to set up our our meeting so I just put this in the uh, agenda to uh, since I have you here captive audience I was thinking we could maybe look at our calendars and see when would be a good time to start working on this jointly and this is for the finance or budget committee right yes so this is to uh, develop the policy statement around foundation investments and Richard Soros said that he would be willing to help uh, if we wanted his help we can start and working uh, work on it ourselves first and then ask him to join later, whichever you prefer. I just figured um, we needed dates basically first to uh, to see what we then, you know, where we go from there. Yeah, I think um, Aviv, I think you would be very important in this capacity. So maybe we should ask him what his, Aviv, what your calendar looks like and maybe we can work oh, on it. I'm, I'm available, well, um, um... I'm available through early June, um, and then I'm, um, and then uh, June, July would be kind of um, tricky for me. But um, I'm available uh, up to June, and then back again. In, uh, and uh, May, um, May 15th, It's not critical. I mean, you could meet before or after May fifteenth, or would you prefer? Oh, to oh, that's where you're getting. At. I'm sorry. Um, uh, I, yeah, I, I could meet before May fifteenth. Um, I don't know how much I'd get done before May 50, but I could definitely meet. Uh, not a problem. Yeah, no, not a problem at all. Okay. So, um, Julia, I'm wondering maybe uh, you, we, you could float an email to the folks on the uh, budget committee and uh, I, I don't know, maybe uh, a Monday, like the, at about the same time, you know, that's not a board meeting and just see if, if we can get some takers. Okay, sounds good. I'm writing this down. So just to make sure that I have everyone. So obviously we have a beef. Lynette, I think, was part of that as well. Yes. Yes. Um, Sherry, okay. good thing. Sherry. And I would like to be included. Okay. And of course, <laughs> anyone else is welcome. We do not want to exclude anyone who would like to join us. So Ron, okay. Kelly, are you interested in this meeting? Sure, or I'll need more people and unless it turns into some kind of an agenda or, you know, too many people in the pot kind of thing yeah right. i don't think that's going to happen so yeah if uh, so please uh julia send it uh, to all the folks we've mentioned okay so i'm adding <laughs> got it okay you've just been volatile okay we're looking for a monday i'll try and set up a doodle um one of the next mondays does that sound okay and then we'll we'll go from there sure. i just wanted to make sure i i did this while i had you all in the board meeting so that I have marching orders. I think that sounds good. Everybody else okay with that? Yeah, That's sounds good. good. With me. Perfect. Well, then let's, let's move on to Julia's executive director's report. Hey, do you want me to share the screen again? Sure. Okay. Find it. Where did it go? Here we go. Oh, and sneak preview, Julia. I added up all those numbers in your first item. 
<laughs> well, some of them have been mentioned by a V already. But yes, I mean, we I, it's been, grant writing has been going really, really well, I have to admit. So you just heard about the 75K from the Monterey Peninsula Foundation. Since then, um, I've also gotten in an additional 5,000 from the Barnard Siegel Charitable Trust. We have the Chevron Steam Grant. Um, and then we're one of the few organizations that got the COVID relief grant. Apparently that was something that the, I, I read somewhere, maybe it has changed since then, but I read somewhere that only 6% of the uh, nonprofits that applied for it actually got it. So mm -hmm. I feel really proud about this one. Yeah, you should. On Friday, Hillary already knows about this one, but then on Friday, mm -hmm. Right before um, sort of close of business, I got an email from the Community Foundation. I had applied for specific COVID funds for the libraries to help with reopening, and we did get the funds. $12,000 will be deposited in our accounts in a couple of weeks that will go directly on to the libraries to help with the purchases necessary of, uh, you know, disposable keyboard covers and extra wipes and extra masks and whatever it is that they need to help get things moving along. So I'm really excited about this. <laughs> well, I count that as at least $125,000. So, wow. <laughs> been, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been, and I mean, we did get the second PPP loan in. It's sitting in a different, um, uh, Abby, if you can help me explain where it sits on our books, right? It was under liabilities. Uh, I'm sorry, what, what, what's the question? The PPP, the PPP fund. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, thanks for reminding me that that's the other thing. Um, um, our income, even though our income is, there's a big swing, that doesn't even include the PPP loan. That's another 36000 um, that right now is sitting in our uh, liability section uh, because it's treated like a, like, a, a, like a conventional loan. But the minute that is forgiven, and I think it was forgiven in 2000 and early 2021, is the that is that part, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, or 2022, uh, 20, yeah, 21. Um, that um, it, it'll move, it'll move, it'll move onto our uh, profit and loss as income. So when it's forgiven, now you don't have to report it; it's excluded. But so that's another thirty-six thousand dollars of, yep. uh, of of revenue. That's not even accounted for on our P and L. That, that's uh, thanks for reminding me. I totally forgot about that. That's <laughs> oh, trying to toot my own horn here. <laughs> um, so we're looking quite good financially right now, and I uh, try and keep those wheels spinning. See, uh, you know, what else is coming along. Uh, and then in terms of uh, some of the other projects, I'm working along with the CSUB students. Um, we just had last week, I attended uh, a, a writing workshop. I think I sent you all the link for that. Mm -hmm. It's really fun. I found myself all of a sudden writing a fiction story without <laughs> ever having done that. So that was really, really cool. I highly recommend it. They're gonna have, I think two or three more workshops. Um, one is being held today, and then and then it's always going to be on a Monday at 5:30. And then you all have seen the uh, last two emails that went out. One was for Library Giving Day, and uh, I mean this is just a new sort of campaign that only uh, started a couple of years ago. I think it was 2019 that they started, and this year when. Uh, Courtney put out the word. Uh, I've added up the sums. We, we have got over a thousand dollars to this campaign. So I'm really proud. That was awesome. And then we have been talking in the last couple of um, uh, meetings to see if we should look for a new firm to help us do our audit or not. Um, Lynette was super helpful in sending me the names of three potential firms in the area. And then um, Avif and I were talking with one of his colleagues who uh, works with nonprofits here at Bianchi and uh, she gave me some tips on how to set this up. So I'm in the process of creating an actual R RFP that we can then send out. Um, I think I have it, I'll have it ready this week to uh, have you guys review it before I, you know, send it out. I want to make sure that you all feel comfortable with the wording and the things that I put in there. So um, that'll, I'll send that to you. And then, ah, oh, I didn't show this image. Bummer. So um, <laughs> actually, <laughs> a really big undertaking what I did here. Have any of you heard of GuideStar? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, it's fantastic. Yay! <laughs> so for those of you who <laughs> 
have a gel guide. So our guide star is basically um, the main database that has all of the, especially national nonprofits, any 501c3 that has to file, uh, you know, a 990 is collected in there with their information. And I think they even have some international ones. And so if you wanted to look up an organization such as our lovely library foundation, that would be a place to go and uh, find out more. And what you can do is you can claim your profile and add more information apart from what is already, uh, already given um, through the 990s. And um, I had always had this on my to-do list, to be honest, since I started with the Library Foundation, but it was just, I never got around to it. This is actually as involved as a full-blown grant, and so I just kind of always pushed it to the side. But uh, the reason why I decided to now make sure to fill it out, and you can see platinum level is actually the highest level of transparency that you can get. Um, the reason why I did it was I was thinking in an increasingly competitive grant market, it might be really helpful for us to showcase the work that we do and be represented on one of these platforms in a way that, um, you know, is recognized as uh, highest level of transparency in hopes of, you know, if we're looking for new funding, um, that we look good. <laughs> so. Yeah, I didn't know anything about this. And so I Googled it. And at first I thought, gosh, why did she bother? I read that it's not a rating or endorsement. But then I read <laughs> that it really works to increase contributions and they were touting mm -hmm. that. So excellent. Mm -hmm. oh, glad, thank to know you. That, glad to know that we've achieved the platinum level. Oh, it was. They wanted to know anything and everything. Under the sun. I mean, <laughs> it, was, it was quite an undertaking. And the reason um, why this came up was I was conversing with, um, I'm sure you all know Beata over in the Seaside branch. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah, it had to do, I, I had a question for her in regards to the um, uh, online database that we have, the Foundation Directory Online, which lets you mm -hmm. research grants for individuals and for organizations. And um, that particular organization, the Foundation online, whatever it's called, um, has now merged with GuideStar. And so whenever that topic came up, Beata actually kind of gave me a nudge and said, you might want to work on this, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> profile of yours. And so I decided it was time to do that. Excellent. Um, and then right before our meeting now, I was just on um, another Zoom with our grant writers. So as you know, we've been working with Tracy Townsend Geek and her um, Townsend and Associates company for the last five years for writing grants. And uh, so last summer, I think she moved to Paso Robles and um, has now been recruited by, out of all places, the Library Foundation in Paso Robles. And since the, um, the membership as on the board would be a conflict of interest, she is now transitioning out from the role of grant writer for our library foundation and is passing it on to her associate, Stephanie McMurtry, with whom I've been working for at least three years now. Stephanie has been doing the brunt of the work for the last couple of years, so she's well familiar with us. And even though it's sad that she's no longer writing our grants, I kind of see her as an in to uh, learn more about the Library Foundation and Paso Robles because I think um, since they're also in a more rural area, there might be a lot of similarities in terms of how things are done or not done or you know what they're looking to do, difficulties they face. And so I think it will be beneficial uh, in that way. And uh, yeah, I think that is the bug of my report near my meetings. So do you have any questions? No, very good. Excellent. Comprehensive, as always. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Julia. Let's move on to Hillary and the librarian's report. I will pull it up. So these are all links, by the way, that are in the original document. Mm -hmm. And I put them in the board report as active links so that you can click them. I appreciate that because it was much easier to give you a link to a giant web page that already had the answer to every question you might have on, especially this legislation. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
So the, the only changes since I wrote this report is on the legislative side, the build back boldly, which is state, uh, the state uh, Democrats introducing their initiative, which had a lot of money, you know, proposed for public libraries. They have just sent us our facilities report we have to do within 48 hours. So, so literally since this meeting started and, and it got sent to me and Jackie and Jackie already wrote, wrote to me about it. So I'm like, okay, when I'm done with the foundation meeting, we'll start working. So wow. they're definitely collecting information on facility needs and infrastructure and such. We know we have a lot. We have everything from new branches that need to be built to branches that need to be upgraded, updated, ADA, weather resistance, climate resistance, you know, getting them generator ready, everything. So um, we will be responding to that. And then the uh, SB 34, which is the library card legislation, which I know that, that you guys covered when you did your day in the district visits, mm -hmm. It's one of those things that is just yeah. so hard to explain. You know, library cards for every student. How can you possibly mm. not love this? <laughs> not and that. and the uh, so we always want to go in with a nice soft. We love. We would love it if every the moment you entered school in California, you got a library card. But mandating it, mandating it, restrictive and putting the entire mandate on libraries in a very restrictive way, you know, is not the way. And in fact, it, we always, I, I, we've been working on this for two years. I was the president of CLA when this was first proposed and we worked trying to get them to say, we love the idea, can we not have it be this way? And they basically didn't take any of our feedback and then they just reintroduced the same legislation again. Um, so I've been talking to the county legislative analyst and you know the county has its own lobbyists at the state and at the federal level and they're ready for whatever I want them to do. They said, yes, we, we oppose unfunded mandates you know, on the county. And I said, well, that's what this is. It's an unfunded and in many ways unworkable mandate on the county. So they're standing by the hope from CLA is we could get the big the big groups like they already have the California Special Districts Association is in opposition mm -hmm. and they're trying to get League of California cities and California um, cities and counties. And they said that would, it, that would save your county from individually have to do anything. It would be the league that would do it. But if that doesn't happen, I will be asking the County of Monterey to formally oppose. And part of that is if you think about our areas, well, think about aromas. We're two blocks from the county line and the nearest school is actually in the neighboring county, but they're nearest to us. So we are functionally their library, but then they have made no provisions for that. Would both libraries would, you know, how, how would this work? Same in Parkfield, um, you know, and the other thing is right now, any school district that wants to call us and say, how do I get every kid a library card? Let's do it. It just may happen completely differently. You know, Monterey Peninsula Unified may require a completely different solution than Gonzales. Mm -hmm. And this basically hands it, here's how you have to do it. So um, if I, I'll keep bringing you news on that, but that may be another ask. If it's gonna come down to it, it may be another uh, advocacy request to you guys to reach out again and say, we love students having library cards. We, we can do this, but you cannot mandate it and then restrict how. Because uh, right now, for example, I went to visit Parkfield branch. I went to watch their uh, student curbside. And this is an eight class one room schoolhouse that they walk across the field, all of them have library cards. In fact, they keep their library cards in the branch and they do a special every week, they do a branch visit. And the part of the reason they keep their library cards in the branch is so we don't have to do any touching. We have their barcodes, they have the little keychain. we have the big card. So done. 
under this legislation, I would have to go to the to um, the Shandon School District and write a five year MOU for something we've already accomplished. And that just it makes no sense. So that's big moving the build back boldly is moving rapidly. Um, otherwise, any questions on anything in my report or any further information or updates you would like. <laughs> I have a question if no one else wants to jump in. So the um, library branches that are offering the computer appointments are also the only branches that are offering limited browsing. Is that correct? Right now, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're hoping by next week, you're going to see on the website additional branches and additional hours. They weren't quite ready for today. Um, I gave them until the 23rd. So they're, they're still tinkering, finalizing. If we do it on Thursdays, when do people go to lunch and how do, you know, that kind of stuff, so. <laughs> Will Marina be one of them? Marina, not yet. And part of that is as my staff at Marina, I don't know if you've noticed, but three of my four full-time people are not at Marina. So right now the issue with Marina is staffing. Yeah, no, I've not been able to. Oh, yeah, you haven't been, you haven't, if, if you've been, yeah, no, that, the, the issue at Marina at the moment is staffing, um, but Seaside is, got it, is okay. uh, computers and browsing right now. Okay, well, currently, currently four libraries, Hillary, and, currently and four. bound to, and, and expanding soon. I, I've asked for one more in each region. Um, I'll tell you verbally but it's not done till it's on the website. We know Pajaro, um, Carmel Valley, and we're just waiting on South County because South County, um, we have a combination of facilities work going on at a couple of the branches and some of the worst COVID numbers, if, mm -hmm. you, if you look by zip code, are in mm -hmm. South County. So we're trying to just be super, where can we do it the best, safest, most optimal way possible? in South County. So I'm for a branch, I'm just waiting on a South County and then we're still finalizing the details. Okay, that sounds great. Any yeah. other questions for Hillary? Yeah, I, I, Hillary, I was just curious, this is kind of a general question. As, as schools are opening up right now, I know I've got two kids that started today, went back to school and I know it's just a, a small stretch, so the, you know, six weeks before summer vacation, but usually I, it seems like the libraries would sync up with the schools, you know, after school programs. Are you noticing like a bigger demand with the influx of, of, of kids going to school? Is that going to change something somewhat that the structure of the libraries are anticipating kids coming in, filing in right after school or how, I don't you know, know how that's going to play out? Right now, our libraries that are mo like, like Buena Vista, school has started at Buena Vista. So we have added there a specific school curbside. Oh. But Buena Vista Middle School, at the same time, they have two cohorts. They keep the cohorts completely separately. The kids can't just wander over after school. They have to go to a designated place, be picked up by their designated person. So I think that the, the after school that we're used to is not going to happen until they can just be like, be free, kids, you know. Right. And, and <laughs> not quite there yet. We're not quite there yet. My, my, that's been our experience um, that the schools, the way they are having to reopen, they can't just be like open the school campus, ring the bell and yeah. never mind what happens after that. Right. So um, we know the fall is going to, uh, in fact, in our meeting this morning, B and her team are just brainstorming on homework help, programming, because we, we're hoping that we can be a lot freer in the fall, that perhaps these kids are just going to be walking to their branch library in a big group like they used to. Um, but that's not what they, right now the schools are being very restrictive. And I think a lot of parents are not just saying, entertain yourself till six o'clock. I don't worry about what you do <laughs> quite yet, quite yet. But we are, we're watching and sometimes it's school to school. Um, some have a very limited number of kids on campus, but they don't have the restrictive drop off and pick up that other campuses do. So we're watching, but Buena Vista is my best example. Right now she added a 
specific school curbside that's completely separate from the public curbside because they will have symptom checked the students and et cetera. But she said, that's really the best way to serve them right now. Even if I was open, they're not allowed to walk in. Their parents have to pick them up off campus. Great, thank you. Any other questions from Hillary? Okay, Julia, I don't know how you've contained yourself until now, but we, <laughs> <laughs> we have finally come to the item that I think you've been so eager to share with us. Yes. The board member recruitment. Yes, so I might have uh, very interested and very eager, and I think also a very good candidate for a board membership. That, oh, my heart is pounding. I'm so excited. Um, so this is, I have to give her full credit. Um, Courtney is just so amazing when it comes to just creative and outside of the box ideas, I remember. Um, it was a couple of weeks ago, I want to say, I talked to her about, you know, I try to keep her updated on what I am doing in terms of uh, moving the foundation forward. And I told her that I'm trying to recruit board members and how, you know, we, I always do the same thing. I keep asking you and I've now realized um, you've been asked and asked and asked and we all only know so many people. So um, I've started to try and find ways on how to ask people that not, you know, might not necessarily, we might not think of to kind of broaden our uh, reach. And uh, one of the people that I talked to was Courtney and Courtney, the way that she um, does things is she takes things in and then they, they kind of simmer with her, we call her the crock pot. And then she just, you know, comes up with these amazing ideas. And um, it was about two weeks ago, I wanna say, she, uh, her and I talked and she uh, had this idea of potentially recruiting Nisha Adelman to the board. And, uh, mm. <laughs> you know, she fits the bill <laughs> in many ways. Uh, she is absolutely familiar with our library system and uh, she is an accomplished writer. She lives in Monterey County. She's from Monterey County. Um, she's also on the younger side. And so I have already had a first meeting with her to kind of gauge interest. That interest is definitely there. I've also made sure to uh, talk to Hillary to see how she feels about this potential recruitment. And um, because I was getting green light, I have now decided to put this on the agenda. So Nisha is definitely interested in joining the board. And uh, if you think she might be worth looking into as a potential board member, we could go ahead and uh, set up maybe a, a yeah. probably still do it virtually, uh, a Zoom meeting to, uh, you know, feel her out a little bit more and see if maybe as of May, she could join us. Yeah, I think oh, I agree the, completely. Yeah, I think it sounds great. In the past, I think we we usually do invite someone to the board meeting sort of before we uh, ask them if they really want to come on the board. But you know, however it progresses, I think that's a terrific suggestion. Well, I didn't want to just uh, uh, barge ahead in uh, you know like a soul soul fashion. I wanted to make sure that the you the board actually had the chance to uh, think it over first and maybe you know over the period of this month between you know this board meeting and the next board meeting that we set up a, a joint zoom with Nisha and whoever is interested um, and then she could potentially sort of like join as a guest um, at the May board meeting and we could then decide whether she's a fit or not does that sound okay that sounds great anybody else have comments about that no no we're well acquainted with her Mm -hmm. I figured. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So who would like to be part of a potential meeting with Nisha to talk to her about the foundation board? Yes, yeah, so on Nancy's okay. hand. Okay. And I'll be there too. So excellent. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> the two of us? Okay. Yeah. Well, and, and, okay. I'll do it. it. Okay, great. We'd love to. Yeah, Ron, if you want to join us, that's great. I'll be there. Excellent. And anybody else? That's, that's a pretty good group, I think. But if anyone else is holding back and wants to meet with Nisha, you know, just let Julia know. Perfect. Yeah, so I'll send out another. Julie, were, were you wanting to say something? 
No, I was just saying it's always a good uh, it's always a good idea that you always you vet people and just so that folks have a chance to say they like them, don't know them, like them, that kind of thing. So, you no, know, I'm I just I was agreeing with the process. How's that? Okay, <laughs> excellent. Good. Okay, okay, then I think maybe we can move on to the new business. And Julia, did you want to talk about the May board meeting? I just thought it float this idea. I don't know how things are looking. I know from some of you individually that you've already gotten fully vaccinated. Um, I just recently received my second uh, COVID shot. Since I thought we possibly might have most of us already vaccinated, I thought I'd find out if you think that by May, um, I forgot when exactly our next board meeting is, May 15th or something, if we should consider um, an in-person meeting, or if it's still too soon. I might be too eager. That's totally fine. I just thought I'd bring it up. Well, maybe we could do a hybrid meeting for, for the first time of getting together. And then that, <laughs> no one, you wouldn't have to say one way yeah. or the other. You know, um, I think you could probably have a Zoom going, Julia. And even if the people yeah. attending the Zoom couldn't see everyone in the room or, you know, however we do it. Um, I'm thinking, you know, why don't we explore a hybrid meeting for May? How do the rest of you feel about that? Mm -hmm. Hybrid meeting. I am totally on board with that. Would you want me to uh, set things up here at Bianchi or? Um, I, I was, I was going to ask where, because you still have the six feet. So we're not going to all fit in that room. No, we're not going to all fit in that room. Is, no. can we, you, with the doors open, would we be able to set up a meeting in the big conference room in Marina? Because that's a big one. Uh, it's being, it's a, I, Monday at Marina, the food bank is doing their stuff in the morning. What I would have to do is check if the, the room is going to be cleaned because we have, we have Alliance on Aging volunteers in there. Mm. So I need, mm. it would have to be being cleaned between the two. Okay. But I can ask, I can ask if I can host you all at Marina. Let me send an email to Jackie and see, because if she says it's gonna get cleaned anyway, oh, um, you might, as you're arriving, the only hurdle with Marina on a Monday, you might end up parking in Walmart and walking up the steps if the food bank is not in. done. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We'll ask, I will ask Jackie, but remember, we still have the six feet mm -hmm. and it's face coverings all the time inside. No well, yeah. exceptions. So. Yes. Okay. Well, and if it turns out to be a hassle finding a place, then I'd say maybe we should just do Zoom again next month and maybe so just depend on what Hillary can uh, find. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, and it's 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 fine. I just kind of put it out there as a as a talking point more than a you know this has to happen now. I just kind of thought I'd gauge not only interest but also possibilities. Um, I know the Carmel Valley Friends did their meeting outside, and they wanted to see, and they they did it out in the park. And I heard from my neighbor who's on the Carmel Valley Friends that they really enjoyed having a meeting in person again. So. Good. Well, I mean, that's that's probably something that we could consider as well, um, having an outside meeting. Wasn't it very windy having an outside, Hillary? You know, I, they didn't say that, but I don't know what, they, what their experience was. It could be, yeah, and Marina can get very windy, so. Okay, well, we can keep thinking about that. <laughs> yeah, I think if it gets, um, you know, too complicated that we probably should do another Zoom one next month, but I'm yeah. certainly open to whatever you can. Um, I'm just eager to yeah, see you all. Whatever you can find out about. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so let's, how about we just see if, if there is um, the ability to meet in Marina. If not, then we might want to postpone it for a little bit longer until things Truly are moving in the right direction. Does that sound look okay? warmer for outside meetings? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I would, I would offer yeah. my backyard, but I don't think we can all fit in terms of six feet apart, even though it's beautiful there now. But yeah. 
Well, I think we've come to the end of the agenda and I wonder if anybody has other things they'd like to say before I bring this meeting to a close. No, we're nope. getting Excellent closer. Job. Yeah. Thank you. And I'm sorry, I, I haven't shown it to you yet. I am this close to finishing the, the video with all of the wonderful interviews that I've had with most of you. Um, it's just the devil's in the details. I'm not happy with some of the transitions that I've put together. So I want to make it right before I show it to you, but I'm really close. So it'll, it'll be ready soon. Sounds good. Okay, thanks everybody. <laughs> and one way or another, uh, we'll get together in May. Sounds Wonderful. The 12.52. Thank you everybody. Bye. Thank Take you. care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take care. You too.